I'm going to be transforming my garage into my dream office while still keeping the garage functionality on a $7,000 budget. I'll be breaking down the costs and showing you the process along the way. Everything I put into this office will be linked in the description below. Now, let me show you how I created a space that I'm excited to work in 24-7 and I hope you get inspiration from this video and make a dream office of your own. First thing we need to do is strip the entire garage, get it down to its bare bones. So we're gonna remove the tables, the desks, everything you see in here, including the floors, so we can give this place a brand new paint job and floor as the base foundation for this new office. Check out what this floor used to look like. It used to be that beautiful white speckles and now it's like kind of falling apart and creating a lot of rubber dust. Just got that fixed today actually. My neighbors are gonna hate me just for one day. Wow, that's a lot of space. Put it all down like a big bet. Pop in the back with the big checks. Now we're going to get the jackhammer and we are going to get rid of all the tiles in here. The tile removal process took about eight hours and proved to be quite the workout. To my surprise, it was a lot easier than anticipated. I took the opportunity to give the garage a fresh coat of flat white paint before installing the new floor. The floor has been grinded down to a smooth finish and now we're ready to lay down that fresh epoxy floor. Foundation of the garage is complete. I've installed a new multicolor epoxy floor, refreshed the walls, and got my bikes out of the way. Now I'm putting my old desk back in so I can continue working as I finish building out the office. I built this four by eight foot workbench six years ago for around 150 bucks. If you want to build the same workbench, I'll leave a link to the instructions in the description below. For this garage transformation, I want to upgrade this piece so it looks super high-end and luxurious by painting it a deep piano black. The first step was sanding this table to a smooth finish so it could absorb the paint. Take a trip west if it all goes south. The time has finally come to start staining this bench. We're going to stain it a classic black. Hopefully it comes out sick. Then we're going to put a polyurethane top coat. So uh, let's make it happen. Oh, look at that. Yes, 
just stained my workbench this classic black color, which is not very black. So I went ahead and bought a Minwax True Black to see if I can stain it once again and make it actually black, because that was my goal. Sun goes down, I'll try another thing if it don't work out. Take a trip west, taste the salt in my mouth. Yeah, yeah, some days that's just how I feel. Try to find my way. Now that we've achieved a true black, it's time to lay down that piano-like finish by applying an oil-based polyurethane. It took three coats along with sanding and waiting 24 hours between each coat. It was very tedious, but so worth the result. Now that the desk is inside, it's time to assemble the kite boarding wall. All this stuff in the back of my truck is all my kite gear. I got four kites, a foil, twin tip board, two harnesses, a pump, some wetsuits, and I have to assemble it in this section on the wall and make sure it doesn't touch that garage railing. Here we go. First step was to create a baseboard in which all the gear would hang from. Of course, I had to stain it black. I got it cut and planned out how I was going to arrange all this in this tiny space. This is how I'm gonna set up the kites on the wall. Just picked up this hardwood reflections butcher block, birch wood. We're gonna stain this and turn this into a huge desk. And luckily I have my neighbor here, Johan. He's gonna be cutting this beautiful butcher block for me. I'm cutting my desk to 30 inches wide. I'll be using the nine inches left over to test and see what color I want for the big desk. What you're seeing is 10 different colored wood stains and I want to know what all of them look like on this birch wood. I divided the sample block, cleaned it with mineral spirits, prepared it with wood conditioner and got to staining. First round of staining is complete. I'm gonna wait two hours and then go back over with the finishes. Polyurethane, gloss, and satin, and the combination of both. I even divided the sample block further to determine if I wanted a gloss or satin finish. I repeated the process of cleaning, sanding, and reapplying the oil-based polyurethane a total of three times for a professional finish. Once done, I repeated the entire process on my other leftover piece with my top four favorite stains to further help me decide on a color for the big desk. The stain you see closest to the camera ended up being my favorite. Now I'm well practiced and ready to repeat the entire process on the main attraction of this garage transformation. Let's chill out and enjoy the satisfaction of creating a desk that will last a lifetime. A desk that is 74 inches long, 30 inches wide, 1.5 inches thick, 100 pounds, 100% real birch wood, stained a rich red mahogany, and finished with three coats of an extremely durable top coat made from the highest quality American made urethane in a satin finish.
have to wait 30 days for this desk to fully cure. In the meantime, I'll be doing a lot of organizing and adding more functional pieces to the garage. Like this tool chest to house all the tools I bought to build this garage office, plus a stylish 3-point IKEA lamp for added ambience lighting. I removed my old desk and let the new desk cure in its place. I then added this tiny velvet couch for guests and myself to lounge. And to accompany this desk, I picked up a used Herman Miller Arion chair for the ultimate ergonomic seating experience. Oh, wow, dude. After waiting 30 days, it's time to finalize the construction of the desk with a pair of American-made, powder-coated steel legs that have a minimalist, modern look. Hiding the 15 cables that power and manage my desk setup was a challenge, but the desk deserved to maintain its clean aesthetic. So I got creative with heavy duty Velcro, cable ties, and a raceway kit, and voila! Now you might think the office is complete, but there was still one stone left unturned. The garage door itself needed to match the theme of the rest of the office, so I got to work. I removed all the 2x4 reinforcements, and this happened. Using all the experience from sanding, staining, and finishing all the wood in the garage, I made quick work of these 2x4s. 